to 36, isn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, hallelujah. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Shall I pray, Father, save me from what lies ahead? But that is the very reason why I came. Father, bring glory and honor to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven saying, I have already done this and I will do it again. When the crowd heard the voice, some of them thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoke to him. Then Jesus told them, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time of judgment for the world has come. And the time when Satan, the prince of this world, shall be cast out. And when I am lifted up on the cross, I will draw everyone to me. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. Die? Asked the crowd. We understood that the Messiah would live forever and never die. Why are you saying he will die? What Messiah are you talking about? Jesus replied, My light will shine out for you. Just a, a little while longer. Walk in it while you can. And go where you want to go before the darkness falls. For then it will be too late for you to find your way. Make use of the light while there's still time. Then you will become light bearers. And after saying this, Jesus went away. And was hidden from them. Let us pray. Oh. Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with thanksgiving for such an opportunity, Lord, to be used as your conduit, as your mouthpiece, Lord God, to speak what you've spoken to me, Lord, what you've spoken to your people, Lord. Let us have an ear to hear today what you're saying, Lord God. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, Lord, in your sight. Father God, I just humble myself before you, Lord. I completely decrease. And Lord, I thank you that your spirit would increase and speak to your people this day. Lord, let us have an ear to hear what you're saying today. Let us not harden our hearts, Lord, as you speak. Lord, we thank you in advance for your Holy Spirit being in the midst of us, Lord God. To speak, Lord, to your people. Lord, we surrender all, even now, Lord God, to hear a now word for the house of God. It is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. We all say. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the greatest blessings is to hear the voice of God. Woe to the man who isn't hearing the voice of God. I think I told somebody not too long ago, I was going to preach a message. They say. I was going to preach a message. You know, in the world, the world will tell us, they say this and they say that. And I'm asking you that it's important that we know not what the world says, but what the Word says. The question today is, are you hearing the voice of the Lord, or are you hearing the noise of the world? They say later today it's going to rain. Hallelujah. But I say that the glory of the latter rain will be greater than the glory of the former rain. Hallelujah. They say. It's very important that we have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying to us this day. As I mentioned earlier last night when I had the pleasure of having my little nieces and my big niece come to visit, my, my eight-year-old comes to me and she's coming to me knowing that I'm a woman of wisdom 
And she asked me, what does stream mean? Then she let me know she was saying extreme. What does this mean? What does that mean? You see, too often the people of God, we go into the wall and we ask them, what does this mean that the Lord is saying? What does that mean? But the Lord spoke to me through Courtney. It was very clear. The mother said, Aunt Paula, you know when the kids come and ask me the question, I go to the source. I go to the source. I go to the Webster's Dictionary. And I give them the exact word what the word says. Not what they say. Not what this meology says. Well, I think, Kenny, it means this. But the word says. And you know the word says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's right. I can't hear what the Lord is saying if I'm not in his presence. Mm. I've got to find a place to go into a secret place and hear what the Lord's saying. It's very important just as it was when Jesus was speaking to crowds. Even as you read this book, it'll tell you that he was speaking. Many didn't even believe they wanted to debate what Jesus was saying. But you're the Messiah. They had their own interpretation of what scripture meant. Mm. That you're the Messiah and that you're supposed to live. Mm. But he says, but I must die. In the preceding verses it says, unless I, the seed dies and falls to the ground and dies, that's all it'll ever be. Mm. But you see, I'm going to die. Jesus died, Kennedy, so that we could live. That's right. And the only way we're going to know that is if we seek the face of the Lord. Mm. Now it's good when we come together, isn't it? Mm. It's good when we come together to hear and fellowship and hear what the Lord's saying. It's important, it's essential. Mm. But Sister Deborah knows all too well how important it is to be in a sacred place to hear what the Lord is saying. You see, I've never been married, I don't know, but I hear a husband and wife, they have their secret place to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. You see, a husband and wife, they're going to, they have their children, they're going to say some things and have the family dinners to talk about some things that are intimate and personal or about their families. But you know, Jesus says, I want some pillow talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, when my wife and I go into our secret place, there's some things that a man wants to say to his wife, a wife wants to say to her husband. Pillow talk. God wants to whisper sweet nothings. Pardon me. God wants to whisper sweet things in you. Mm -hmm. But do you have an ear to hear what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Isn't it true that many marriages today are so busy with people on the outside telling them how they should run their marriage and how they should do this and how they should do that. And they've got counselors telling them, well, I know that you should do this. You did 12-step program, but there's only one program Amen. with the body of believers. Amen. And that's the program, Russia, of the Word of God. Hallelujah. What does the Word say? I love this verse. In verse 28 when he says... Then the voice spoke from heaven. Mm. I have already done this and I will do it again. Mm. Mm. There's nothing new under the sun to God. God has spoke to us mm. through his prophets. He spoke through us through the Old Testament, the New Testament. God's still speaking. Some say God's not speaking today. Mm. God doesn't change. Amen. God's no respecter of person, Brother Willie. If God's speaking to me, he should be speaking to you. Mm. A lot of times we say God's not speaking because we're not listening. Mm. You see, if I'm sitting around and I'm messing around and I'm playing around, I'm distracted by the outside noise. And then we say God isn't speaking to us because we're not listening. But you know, in order to hear, there's got to be a revelation. There's got to be a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit for the natural man to understand the spiritual things. Amen. If the Holy Spirit mm. has not done a work in you, I 
God can talk to you. The man of God can speak the word of truth to you. And it'll just bounce off your ear and like, you'll be flicking something away like, what is that noise? Mm. You know, I'm going to take a side journey here because too often what we do is, give me your cell phone, brother. This thing here, I'll tell you what, Satan wants to use this thing against us. Mm. See, we can use it for God's glory. Amen. Satan meant he needs this thing for evil. Let me, let me talk about it just a brief minute. Not a part of the message, but God put it in my spirit. This thing we call our lifeline, we sleep with this thing. I'm, I'm guilty of it. I, I'm guilty of it. God's convicted me of it. See, this message is for me. See, that's why I gave it to me. We sleep with it next to us. We take it to the bathroom with us. Ooh, germs. You see, we take it everywhere. <laughs> well, hallelujah. <laughs> That phone is our lifeline, we think. We pick that phone up. Oh, heavens forbid I miss a call. Oh, heavens forbid I miss a text. Oh, heavens forbid somebody posts something on Facebook and I missed it. Oh, heavens forbid there's some audio on Instagram that I need to find out what's going on in everybody else's business. But let me tell you what. Jesus wants to talk to you. If we would carry a word, if we would have the Holy Bible to go take it in the bathroom, I can't be away from the word. If we take the word with us everywhere we go, when we go into the marketplace, when we go to the laundromat, when we go to get some petrol, you know that word is written on our hearts. Mm. If we would be as diligent as taking the word with us everywhere we go. Amen. But what do we do? We got our phone. We got to stay in the know. You know, mm. they say, they say the weather is getting bad. They say the economy is worse than it's ever been. They say 